Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. Welcome, episode 344 of Better on Draft. We are doing a special edition today. I believe originally we are going to call it 40 Ounce Friday. Most people don't listen to it on Fridays, though. Um, that is a throwback to a show Ken and I had bad back over a decade ago. Um, I hope you guys agree. I think a good name with it for having March Madness going on is Malt Liquor Madness. Seems like a good name for the show today. So with me here always, the sexy Rob and the lovely Wendy. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> try not to try not to laugh. Um, so you guys had one job this week. We were all supposed to show up with some malt liquor. I'm going to go ahead and start here first. Um, I've got a wonderful 40 of Mickey's fine malt liquor. And then throwing back, we were talking before the show about craft uh, malt liquor. This might be the last can of in existence. It's Rochester Mills Old St. Mix. No relation to Mickey's, but that might be the last one in existence. I think I have all the remaining labels of it, too. Um, let's start with you, Rob. How'd you do? I did not do well. <laughs> Three liquor stores later, I ended up settling for a lychee good day, which is some sort of a vodka drink with lychee in it. Now, tell everyone, because I don't even know what's lychee. Um, it's, uh, oh, goodness. Um, it, it's it, So it's a, a fruit out of, like, Southeast Asia. They have a lot of it. Um, and it comes in this weird shell that you peel off and then you take um, it, it's a beautiful eyeball looking white fruit inside of it um, nice. that uh, tastes a little bit like strawberries and cherries um, kind of lightly. It's really good. All right. Excellent. Wendy, did you do the job? Did you get it done? I, I did. I actually, um, I even, you can see the two ninety nine sticker on it. still. Um, <laughs> it is, I got a champagne golden, uh, nice. Champagne is still one of my favorite drinks, and I can't get it in my area. Um, I have to go farther away to get it. So I talked my local party store owner into um, ordering some for me. He's trying to get the pink for me because that's my favorite, but this will do in a pinch. I didn't even know they still made that till you brought it up on a previous show. Now, <laughs> here's what shocked me today. So I've been out of the 40 drinking game for quite a while um go to the liquor store today you know the 40s are all on the bottom shelf where they're usually at almost all the bottles are plastic now and that really kind of disappointed me i was originally going to get some oe 800 and make a brass monkey but it was a plastic bottle almost like you know like a um soda bottle like getting like a one liter pepsi or a coke in a plastic bottle I have no idea why they started doing this because, you know, you're supposed to drink your 40 and then smash it in the alley behind your house. I mean, how do you do that with a plastic bottle? Well, that's probably why they started doing that. <laughs> but yeah. thankfully, they came through with the Mickey's. It was Mickey's or it was uh, Steel Reserve. So definitely went with the Mickey's there. Um, <laughs> now, Rob, you told us you don't have a lot of experience with malt liquor. Um, I do not. <laughs> what's the reason? Uh, I don't know. It just never really seemed to be a thing that was around. I never had a reason to buy it. <laughs> oh, man. I forgot what this is. This is actually good, too. Now, most people don't get started drinking craft beer right off the bat. What did you start with? What got you into beer in general? Yeah, it was probably wine coolers and, and things like that. <laughs> How do you go from wine cooler to to craft beer? I guess that's I, a weird jump. I know early on um, there was a creek or a frambois involved. And what about yeah. you, Wendy? Sorry, I had to take a sip of the Mickey's because it's tasting <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> what about you, Wendy? Um, no, I did not drink beer at all. I thought it was disgusting. When I first started out, we would um, drink a Colt 45 every now and then when I was younger. Um, if my friend's sister could get her hands on it <laughs> um but no i i drank liquor and it wasn't until i joined a um volunteer organization that spent a lot of time at bars that i realized i can't afford to drink liquor all the time 
in my twenties. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to learn to like beer. So I started with Killian's. That was my gateway beer. I realized, oh, beer can actually taste pretty good. And then I went to a web where I was volunteering and I got to pour for Coonan's and they introduced me to like all 50 flavors that they brought with them. And I had to try before I could serve. So that was my introduction to craft beer. (laughs) Nice. You know, that's a brewery that really goes under the radar if you're in Michigan these days, because there are so many options where they are one of the old school ones that had been there for quite a while. Um, I have an interesting way that I got into malt liquor. It's what I was drinking actually for quite a while. Uh, before, like you, Wendy, I was drinking, um, I like screwdrivers, vodka, cranberries, things like that. Um, the job I was working at at the time, I worked till 1 a.m. It was like a 4 to, four p.m. to 1 a.m. shift. So the only place you could get liquor, beer, or anything was like the old Farmer Jack that was open 24 hours right by where I lived <laughs> at the time. And I discovered uh, 40 ounces of King Cobra for $1.49. So, you know, early 20s, I was probably 22, 23. You know, you can't beat 80 ounces of beer for three bucks plus deposit. So I was drinking that for a long time until Ken finally convinced me to have a Bell's. Um, I think it was a Bell's Amber. Bell's too hard or something like that. And then it just, it was gone from there. Excuse me. Now, we'll get back to the malt liquor talk. I know Wendy's got some few things on that, but we do have a contest going on right now related to March Madness. It's our annual March Draftness event. Um, finals, actually, if you're listening on Friday, start, I don't know what time it is out there, less than an hour, I believe, out on the East Coast. Um, that'd yeah, be 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time. PM. Um, that, remind me who's in the finals. I know it's Arctic Circle. I can't think of the other one because they have a cool logo. I just, but it doesn't say the name. Coopersville. Coopersville. No. Oh. Yeah. Coopersville. Okay, perfect. As I'm pulling up the information on it now, um, what are your thoughts on this? First off, Arctic Circle, they're hilarious when it comes to um, going against the competition. They put up hilarious memes. They're always funny. They're both two great guys that started that place. Um, in fact, didn't wasn't it the owner of Loaded Dice and one of the owners of Arctic Circle sitting on the blue couch at the end of the contest? Because they went together. I'll have to go back and look at that. Yes. But tell. <laughs> yep, that was them. I thought so. Thank you. So, Wendy, let's hear your thoughts on this. I think this has been an interesting contest. Um, there were some really shocking upsets as far as what we saw in some of the previous rounds. What have your thoughts been on it so far? I think it's been amazing. It's really fun to watch. There were a lot of breweries that I haven't even been to yet, which I think is, is a lot of fun. Um, I've heard, talk to people who were like, oh, none of the big names were in there. And I'm like, yeah, but this is a good way for some of the younger breweries or the newer breweries to be able to get their name out there and and kind of get their fan group together and, and get their name out. So I think it's really cool um, seeing all the different ones that I'm like, I had to look up a couple of them. Which what? No, I was like, huh. Go ahead. Now I'm yeah, I'm looking at the divisions here. Which ones had you not heard of? I do not have the list up in front of me. Hang on one second. Oh, no worries. So um there's always a couple of shots. Yeah, in here. I don't have the list up, so um No, you're good. Yeah, there was Put there was the just spot. a few new ones. Yeah, my computer is being really slow today, too. So I don't know. It's kind of a delay when I'm talking to you guys. So um, I can't even think of the name of them right now. But there was a couple that I was like, huh, never heard of that one. And I definitely haven't been there. So they're definitely on my list to go to now. But which is working because that's the whole point in doing this, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And for people who don't know, uh, if you win the contest, we do eliminate you from uh, competing again, simply because we had an issue of the same brewery winning over and over the first few years of doing this. Um, Definitely some upsets here. Um, I'm looking at the North region specifically. Uh, You know, our web developer, Bill, has been pushing this Alpha Michigan brewery that's somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the Upper Peninsula. They knocked off Sheboygan and Austin Brothers. 
Austin Brothers was in the finals a couple of years ago. I don't know if they just didn't put anything behind it, but that was an absolute shock as far as I was concerned. And that, there were and, still some really high votes on that, so I don't even think that was necessarily the case. Yeah, I have no idea because I always thought Austin Brothers was going to be the first one out of the North to finally win. I'd been pushing hard for one of the two Alpina breweries to pull it off for a long time. And we actually had them go head to head in the, uh, what does he call it? The ESB eight uh, a couple of years ago, which was actually pretty good. Um, I believe third life, uh, th- yeah, third life knocked off right brain as well. That's always the shocker is right brain either goes to the uh, ESB eight or they're knocked out in the first round uh, two years ago. Hopside knocked them out, and then this year, Third Life knocked them out. Um, and Third Life the was one of the ones I never heard of, by the way. That is in Manistee, I believe. Really cute little town. I haven't been there since they opened. Now, um, but Right Brain, they're always the number one seed in the North because we go, the way we do it is they are listed by um, the number of follows that they have on their site. Uh, so Right Brain's almost always number one just because of the biggest brewery in the North. And then the other shocker is every year, um, what is the mead with the bumblebee? Oh, man, it's slipping my mind. Wendy, what's the meadery in Ferndale? Bee Nectar. Bee Nectar, thank you. They have more likes than anyone in the contest. And every year they get knocked out in the first round. Now, they did lose to Block, who made it to the final four. Um they did win the central division, but it doesn't make sense to me how that actually happens. What are your thoughts on that? On how these big breweries constantly get knocked out? My opinion is it just has to do with fans getting behind them. I have said for years in competitions like this that it's not about having the best beer. It's not about um, even putting your name out there as much. It's about getting your people to stand behind you. That's why we see breweries with mediocre beer last a really long time. It's because they take care of their people. Now, now tell us about these breweries with mediocre beer. You want to name a few? I, I don't want to name anybody. <laughs> but there are, we've all been to one or two. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I In any think state. Of anyone. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at some of the regions. I couldn't tell you one that has mediocre beer here. I also haven't been to all of them as well. Um, so I'm completely new to March Draftness. I, I had never followed it before. I had actually seen it before, but I had never followed it before. And I am I obviously don't have as much of a Michigan background as, <laughs> as everybody else in the podcast. But I have very much enjoyed watching the whole thing unfold and how excited people get about it. Um, That that has been kind of surprising to me and interesting to me. Well, I'm not even going to lie this year, the way we did the voting in the group, we have never had this number of votes for any of these contests. Usually if you got five or 600 votes, you were probably winning. Now they're all in the thousands. And I don't know how we got to that point this year, but it's really nice to see. So people are taking you know, notice to this. And I know the breweries. That's because you added me to the team. That that could be it. Absolutely. (laughs) They got the Indiana people coming in. Well, it it also helps. It it helps that we can share the posts and you can vote from the shares. Whereas in the past, you had to go to the original post in order to vote. So it's made voting a lot easier. Yeah, that makes sense. So there was one thing that came up in the first round, and this kind of shocked me. I didn't know where it came from. Um, Dearborn was going against uh, Rustic Leaf. And like the day before the voting end, Dearborn posted something. They said they had no idea they were even in this and didn't even know what it was for. You know, we've known the Dearborn Brewing guys for a long time. Are they just not paying attention, I wonder? Or do some of these companies not know that they're even involved? Well, here's the situation with that. They had something, some type of emergency going on in the brewery. So the owner was focused on that and didn't tell the social media person that they had signed us up for this contest. Okay. That makes so more sense. That was, that's where it came from. It wasn't, it was just a, he had something going on, so he couldn't, 
he didn't share that information because he was focused on his priority, which is his business. <laughs> and <laughs> he makes, makes more sense. money from that. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I totally get that. Now, the great thing about it, um, Rob, if you don't know, the winner, the winning brewery does have better on draft go and buy a keg of one of their beers and give it out to the fans there as uh as a winning prize. And that's then, awesome. Like, yeah, like I said, they're retired after that. I kind of want to float the idea if we could get get some of these winners. I know one of the winners one year got mad at me. I'm not going to name who. Um, <laughs> probably easy to figure out because I said, yeah, I mean, it's easy to win when you're getting people from North Carolina voting for you, um, which was the case. I was going through and like 90% of the votes weren't even for Michigan. I was like, huh. Um, and then reached out after. Family and friends. And, that's what it's all about. Yeah. It is. It makes sense. It is. Um, but one thing I think we should try to do, and, you know, I'm just spitballing here because we haven't really discussed it, but I think we should one year get the winners. I think I'm trying to think how long we've been doing this now and how many winners we have. Problem is one brewery won a couple of times, but put them up, see if we can get some of the bigger breweries in other parts of the country and do like a 16 round of 16 with the winners versus some of the best out there and see how they stack up. I think it'd be a really good time just to see how it goes to see if the Michigan beer could pull it off. And, you know, we're talking things like what's that looking at who are the winners, who the winners have been. I think we could hold our own for sure. Oh, absolutely. That's why I think it'd be a fun thing to do. Like if you get like a bottle logic in there, or if you get like a firestone Walker, um, Sierra Nevada, some of those bigger names out there, it'd be really interesting to see how it plays out. Now, Rob, you haven't been with us for too long. Like you said, this is your first year doing this uh, as far as uh, this goes. Is there anything like this in Indiana that goes down? There's okay. So every I've seen brackets everywhere I've been. I travel a lot and and March is often a busy month for me. End of quarter stuff and all that. Um, but yeah, as, there's always some sort of a bracket thing, but it, this is the first one I remember seeing that works like this one. Um, usually, it well, it'll still be fan voting or, or what have you, but um, I, I'm trying to think of the one that I saw last year in India, or might not have been last year because of COVID recovery stuff still going on. But the last time I saw one in, in Indianapolis area, it was Indianapolis breweries, but I, I feel like it was particular beers were put up um, and then kind of went head to head on taps at some of the bars in the area. And the voting was based on how many were on how many they sold. I have yeah. seen those before. That is an interesting way to do it, but if you want your, your you to win, here. you have to go. We used to. Yeah. I actually used to do that in Westland. Oh, wow. Um, that one closed, didn't it? As far as Ashley's goes. Rest in peace. Yes. Or, I'll remember they was it the Bud Light tap handle they buried outside by the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> they like retired the beer. Yeah. That was a great place um, because they had the Cascale Festival there every year. And it's such yeah. a great time to be able to get nothing but Cascale. And you get some really unique combinations. Uh, the last time I went to it, we renamed it the Cascale Festival because it was hailing for a good part of the thing. It was just terrible weather. But always a great time. My That's favorite festival that they did was Belgian Festival. Oh, I can and imagine. And they would that actually bring well. brewers over from the Belgian breweries to serve their beer in the big tent in the parking lot. It was fun. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah stuff I'm like so that sad. is incredible. They, they still have a um, pared down version at the Ashley's in Ann Arbor. But um, yeah, I miss. I miss that festival like crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah, when you get small, yeah, when you get smaller festivals like that, they're always a lot of fun. Now, Rob, I know you haven't been to it, but when did you ever go to the Royal Oak, one of the Royal Oak beer festivals? Yes. Those are absolutely fun. You don't get the most like ultra rare craft beer there. You'll have like, Sam Adams will be there. Uh, some of the other local breweries. I, just a nice small in the farmer's market there. Absolutely fun. Um, do you have a lot of those yeah. down there, Rob? As far as the smaller ones, or is it just the bigger breweries? 
or bigger um, yeah, festivals. We, sorry, there's there's quite a few smaller um, brewery festivals, and I've even seen well, so um, yeah, like some of the smaller breweries will do their own like little festival. Um, so we had traders on, and it's not really a festival necessarily, but he sets up shop in the, the local pumpkin patch a couple of times during <laughs> you know that time of year. So that's that kind of counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stuff like that is absolutely fun. Um, there's something that goes on out here, usually the fall, winter, and spring, uh, which is called Roars and Pours. It's at the it's at the zoo, and most of the zoo is closed down because it's dark. You know, it gets dark here, uh, like everywhere else. So the animals are tough to see, but it's you know they've got uh, places pouring beer. They've got the things like the um, the stupid game. Uh, oh my god, uh, cornhole. I couldn't think of the name. Yeah. They got things like cornhole. They got these giant three wheelers you can ride around on. Usually it's a lot of younger, like college kids, 20, 21, that sort of thing. But you always see them out there and people show up. It's like 10 bucks to get in and people just have a great time with it. Um, I wish there were more smaller events like that. Cause it's fun to go to a beer festival. That's big, but it's not there's, always the most fun. There's a few in the area that I want to do the, the zoo one. Uh, we have one at the zoo as well. There's one called hops and flip flops that they do right by the speedway in the town of speedway. Um, that there's a couple of, of breweries in the area there too. Um, so they shut down the main street and yeah, you walk around in your flip flops and drink beer on the street there. <laughs> as it should be. That's a great time <laughs> for sure. Yeah. What about you, Wendy, do you like some of the smaller ones over the big gigantic ones? For sure. Um, you get to see, you get to have a little bit more conversation. Um, it's not as many people sometimes. So yeah, I definitely like to go, you get to try some new things that you might not get to. If they're trying to appeal to the masses, they'll a lot of times at the bigger festivals, they'll bring their most popular beers. And I like, especially like at the Michigan beer festivals, I like it when they bring the stuff that's not their most popular because then we can get to try some other stuff that I can't necessarily get at the store. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, it really is a good way to try something even that you're not even going to see at the bigger festivals for sure. Um, now I want to swing back to the March draftness. We kind of got off topic there. Um, just we'll wrap this up here and move on. Cause I know Wendy's got some fun stuff here for us. Um, what are your thoughts? Who are you predicting to win? Rob, we'll start with you. Uh, I well, I have no idea, but I would guess. Uh, like, I don't know either of these. I don't know either of these breweries, Arctic Circle or Coopersville. So go Coopersville. Yeah. <laughs> and you, Wendy? Well, I love the meme that Agma put out, but I'm hoping that they didn't uh, jinx them. So I'm oh. hoping. I'm thinking that Arctic Circle is going to going to seal it up. Yeah, I'm with you just because it gets tougher for some of those smaller breweries like Coopersville. I don't even know where Coopersville is as far as in the state of Michigan. It's over by Grand Rapids. By where? I'm sorry. By Muskegon. In between like Grand Rapids oh, West, and Muskegon. West, West side of the West state. Side. Okay. So, you know, the breweries that are in a bigger area, like the Metro Detroit area, do definitely have an advantage. And like we were talking about, when you're on there doing fun things and pushing it like the Arctic Circle guys, I agree with you. I think they are going to pull it off. Um, Ogma being, if you didn't know, Rob, I believe they won last year. Uh, Well-deserved win. They're a pretty popular brewery. They popped up okay. really fast, and people just fell in love with them. Um, and it was only their second year in it. They, I believe they got to the final four maybe the year before, close to it. Um so just really popular brewery and really get the people behind them. Uh, Wendy, are they in Jackson, I believe? Yes. Yep. Okay. I thought so. But Anytime yeah, I'm they, going in or out of the state that way, I try to stop. Stop by Ogma. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good things. Unfortunately, they opened since I've lived out there. Um, but definitely they're, they're one of the good ones for sure. Now, um, we're going to swing back to malt liquor. Wendy has got some information. Um, Wendy's going to tell us about what actually makes something a malt liquor. First off, you want to tell us a bit about that? Um, malt liquor basically has to do what? Let's, let's start with the quiz first. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> and then we'll talk about the malt liquor. So Let's I did find a Sporacle quiz. live quiz on the on the, our computer here, the World Wide Web, that uh, it has to deal mainly with malt liquor. So I'm going to give you a clue, <laughs> and you have to guess the brand of the malt liquor. Okay. So the first one, we're going to start out easy. Endorsed by Billy D. Williams. Cool. 45. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, named after a snake. King Cobra. <laughs> Often mentioned in songs by the Beastie Boys. Ooh. I don't know. You mentioned it earlier. That's why I think it's funny so, that you just said that. So a brass, so a brass monkey is not. Is that what we're talking about, or is it OE eight hundred? The OE eight hundred. I have never known the one that's that. mentioned. But that's what's in a brass monkey. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never heard him mention. I'm not the like a Beastie Boys fan, but Rob, do you know what a brass monkey is? Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the cannonball part of it, but. I don't know the drink part of it. Well, the drink part is you get a <laughs> bottle of OE, OE 800. You drink it down to the label. So, for example, almost to where I'm at on this. And then you pour in orange juice. Okay. That's a brass monkey. You're like, what the hell is this? What are we doing? <laughs> so it's the, the, it's a beer mosa. Yeah. It's a beer mosa. Yeah, it is. A, Basically, mosa is what's going on. Driver. Sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's also yeah, the, we, the plate that is used to hold cannonballs <laughs> next to the cannon oh, on the it? ship. <laughs> so when you freeze the no balls idea. off a of brass monkey, that's what, we, that's what it means. We we both learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> See? All right, Wendy, what's what's the next question? All right. Uh for some reason the bottle is emblazoned with the numbers two one one. That would be, I mentioned this earlier, steel reserve. Correct. Uh, trademark is a green bee or wasp. Right there. There you go. <laughs> uh, canner, canner bottle features a bull. Ooh. I've run out of. We've talked about this on the show before, too. Have we talked about this one? I'm drawing a blank on this one. Schlitz. Not eyes. Schlitz. Is Schlitz malt liquor? Yep. Dang. Okay. Uh, endorsed by numerous rappers, including Snoop Dogg and Wu Tang. That's got to be the same odds. Yes. <laughs> uh, another exclusive name that perhaps calls for membership dues, which I didn't realize that this was a malt liquor, but I guess that makes sense. Oh, I have no idea. It is Club? Country Club. Oh, I've never even heard of uh, that. <laughs> also, the name of a gun. Colt 45? Didn't we already have that one? Nope. It's oh, a different a one. Different one. Ooh. Oh, geez. You think I would. Magnum? I think we've mentioned this one oh. on the show before. Magnum. Yeah, yeah Magnum. Yeah. Is it not Magnum? Is it? Uh, shares a name Robert. with a famous Native American. It is. <laughs> Famous Native American. Geronimo? I don't. I'm really out of my depth. <laughs> no, but I would totally drink a beer called Geronimo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something like. Only if you play or... that song in the background, though. <laughs> I have no idea what this one is. Pocahontas. Crazy Horse. Crazy I didn't know there was a crazy horse beer. Apparently, not a lot of people do because this one only got 11.2% people have gotten this correct. Oh, that wow. particular question. <laughs> um, the name would suggest that it is a rather exclusive malt liquor. Oh, man. I'm running out of ideas here. Special Reserve. I said it was going to get harder. There was a uh, old or not old Milwaukee, Milwaukee's best special reserve at one point. I don't know if that's it though. 
this oh, one yeah. was private stock. Private and again, stock. the percentage of people who've gotten these questions correct have gone down drastically as I'm <laughs> as I'm looking at these <laughs> in order. Uh, let's see what's next. Oh, the name would suggest that people in the military might enjoy it. Is it night flight? No, it has to do with something they might wear. Camo? Yes. Yeah, there <laughs> is it. a camo. I did, yeah. On um, a rather obscure brand named after a naughty amphibian. I don't know why I said it that way, but it's a naughty <laughs> amphibian. <laughs> 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 I have no idea. <laughs> Dirty frog. <laughs> Bad frog. But yes, oh, you, you were close. close. <laughs> yeah, you were close. And the last one I have, <laughs> the last one I have is also known as XXL. Oh, I can picture this one. I just can't. Yeah, I know. I've seen this one. <laughs> it's got it's got a spelling that drives me insane. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, boy. I'm right near New York, so I'm going to say Excelsior. <laughs> no. Is that not it? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm drawing a That's blank. All the license plates here would beg to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what so is it, Wendy? My biggest, one of my biggest pet peeves is when they use words to spell things like when they, like mac and cheese spelled C H E E Z, it, I don't know why it just drives me insane. So <laughs> this one is Fat Boy P H A T, and only one point eight percent of the people who took this quiz knew that answer. So I don't know exactly where we would find it. I kind of want to look it up right. Now. I'm not gonna lie. And now you're <laughs> mad about it. Like this is horseshit. I know. It's not B O I. Are these? Yeah. <laughs> it's not BOI. Oh, there's a fat boy sushi. Of course. Yeah, I, I can't even find a, a I am on an awful uh hotel internet connection, so I'm going to be a little laggy. Oh, no worries at all. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I you know they give you that one. It's going around right now. It, maybe it's the snow here. The snow there. Meanwhile, you weren't here yet, Wendy. I've got the air conditioner on. It's like 85 degrees here today. It's still 83 out. I'm not talking to you right now. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I I just think it's funny that, like, the one day I have to get my grandma out of the house, it it snows, like, the entire day. So I'm like, come on. But that's all right. (laughs) What was it? Tuesday was the first. Wednesday was the first day of spring. Tuesday it switched over, and it was snowing here in New Jersey on Wednesday. Oh boy, you guys enjoy that. Yeah, we'll keep it here. So, all right, I'm not going to look up Fat Boy anymore. Um, I will tell you what I've heard about the malt liquor, though. Um, apparently, malt liquor includes beer, and shall be construed to mean any beverage obtained by the alcoholic fermentation of any infusion or decoction of barley, malt, hops, or any other similar products or any combination thereof in water containing more than three and one-fifth percent of alcohol by weight. That's according to Wikipedia. Interesting. So go ahead. It's a very broad definition. I know. So the very next thing that came up was that White Claw is malt liquor that's a better classification than as beer yes wait is it was it considered beer no i don't think so no i don't think seltzers are considered beer um i know a lot of breweries that are making them making so seltzers, what i yeah. what i deemed is the difference in malt liquor is that it's usually a higher abv I'm curious now what's this mickey's yeah i don't, I don't think, think there's mickey's many hops in them hard. either yeah, it's. I think it's more corn than it is, um, at least for the beer, like what I'm drinking. So maybe it's like a bourbon. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, bourbon though has to is not considered a malt liquor though because of the way that it's distilled. Um, it is distilled, right? That is definitely a differentiator. Yeah, it takes like four years to make it to. I'm not a bourbon guy, and doesn't it have to be made in the U.S. Isn't that like the rule? Mm. I don't know that it has to be made in the U.S. anymore. Maybe. Uh, the the, the uh, rumor was always it had to be in Bourbon County, Kentucky, specifically. But that's it's no longer true. Either. Yeah, it's not true. There's lots of rules around it, though. Like you can, you got to use new barrels. Um, oh, there's uh, the amount of corn. Um, is is very specific. You have to use, I think, at least fifty one percent corn. Yeah, that There's I know. Rules Which, around it. Yeah, Ken's the whiskey guy. I wish he was here for this. He could probably tell yeah. us all about it. But anyways, moving on with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are either of you seltzer people? Let me ask you that. No, I would not pick out a seltzer. Not really. Like there. No, if there is nothing else to drink or um, I'm just looking, I can't even say looking for something to quench my thirst because usually a seltzer won't do that. It's, it delivers artificial flavors. <laughs> so if you want so something that o- pretends to taste like an orange or something, then <laughs> there you go. The- <laughs> Good Lord. The only seltzers I really like, because someone told me this before years ago, and it's always stuck in my head. Um, Drinking a seltzer is like licking an old TV screen, like the old like CRT (laughs) televisions. That's what it tastes like, is licking the static off the TV screen. The the only time I'll drink a seltzer is, you know, they have like those 8% ones. Um, Just like Mike's makes a Eight percent, eight or nine percent hard lemonade. It's like Mike's harder. Mike's harder I lemonade. Hope. Yeah, I always end up with these in Hawaii of all places too. Like I walk into the ABC stores, like, oh, what am I going to get? You, you got the choices between the um, the new Sierra Nevada variants. You have the Voodoo Ranger, or then you've got Mike's Harder. So uh-huh. you know, oh, like I'll get the Mike's Harder and knock back a few of those. It's when like my totally daughter. Enough. When my daughter turned 21, I picked up a bunch of random beers and, and <laughs> beer adjacent things. Just, you know, because she like, she's not into alcohol. She totally had her chance before she was 21 and she wanted. Um, but mm-hmm. when she turned 21, I figured, well, let's give her a chance to try all the different things. And I still have the Mike's Harder. It, it's not quite a year ago, but I still have the Mike's <laughs> Harder in the fridge. So I know she didn't drink it. <laughs> well, definitely drink it. I don't know if you like Mike's, but those are actually pretty good. Maybe because there's more yeah. alcohol in them. They're better in Canada. Uh, Rob, I don't know if you've ever been there. Wendy, I'm sure you've had it in Canada, especially when it was big. They um, make my stomach upset. There's too much sugar oh, yeah. in it. Gotcha. Um, back in the day when it when it first came out, um, like I mentioned earlier on the show, it's not the malt beverage like it is here. It's actual vodka and lemonade. At least it used to be when it first came out. And we were in London, Ontario, I think in 99. And uh, being a mutual friend of the show, it's been friends with for a long time. We literally, we went to whatever the the state controlled or whatever the government controlled liquor store is there. And entirely LCBO. loaded up. Yeah. Totally loaded up a um, shopping cart with the cranberry and the lemonade because everyone loved it. It was like the craze back then when it first yeah, I know it was not I know it was an LCBO then because the beer store, you have to order it and they slide it down the conveyor to you. <laughs> yeah, you are right. You <laughs> are correct on that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Such a weird setup they have there. I don't understand why you can't just go into the gas station or the grocery store and at least it's, pick up beer. The The province controls all the liquor licenses or in liquor sales, right? And they, it, this is one of the, those things where I really hate capitalism. Um, but the beer store, so LCBO is, is run by the, the province, you know, that's, that's mm-hmm. more you live by an agency of the province or, you know, partnership or whatever. The beer store is totally owned by Molson. 
Is it really? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. So, that's a that's a racket. I don't know right if there. it's totally owned by Molson, but like, yeah, it, it, it's it's if you go in there, you are going to find Molson and all of their brands are the things that you can get slid down the conveyor belt to you. <laughs> <laughs> when did you have experience with the beer store in Canada anywhere? I do not. I remember we found beers there like you could get a 30 case for like 30 dollars it was like the worst beer in existence but like under the cap it would say only a buck of beer like you'd pop open the cap and it'd say only a buck of beer it's, just, it's like maddie could, light <laughs> yeah you no know, it was definitely like and that quantity or quality it was something canadian probably a molson variant now that you're saying that but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we're we we're having a good time with that beer. We had no idea what's going on. By the way, I did share if you guys didn't see it to you guys a picture of the Fat Boy malt liquor bottle. Um, definitely take a look at that. I was trying to find a way to sh- to like post it in our chat, but was curvy. Able to do that. Yeah, it also has the XXL on it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have never seen this one before. The bottle looks weird. But... It's brewed with ginseng. By the Mal- the Memphis Brewing Company. Huh. Here's someone selling one on eBay. It's just an empty bottle, though. They want $35 or best offer. I'm going to offer them 50 cents. And see, <laughs> I never knew this was a thing. Selling empty bottles of beer. Huh. Okay. Anyways, uh, do you guys collect man. anything like that? I need to pay attention to that because I could make a shit ton of money. I was going to say, um, do you guys collect those? I have certain bottles that I've kept. Um, sometimes, if I really like the can art, I'll keep it. And uh, if it's a special bottle, like I've got, actually right over here on my desk, um, Seniors Quadruple from Coonins. Oh, nice. I kept that one because nice. Seniors, who I credit with making me try all the beers at Webb, so that's why I <laughs> why I drink craft beer. Um so like things like that i keep a beer that was made for me things like that so yeah i'm looking at some of these things on here apparently everyone likes schmitz of philadelphia um memorabilia i've never heard of that i don't know if they exist anymore but man there's Hmm. a lot of things on here of them trying to sell this and then you've got coors light inflatable blow up man cave advertising bottle and then I think you have the Keebler Elf advertising something called Peels Beer. P- is it Peels on Draft? Okay. <laughs> this is definitely something I need to take a look at. Uh, Rob, do you collect any bottles or memorabilia like that? I do not. Sometimes when I am doing trading, I ship um, collectible cans. <laughs> at least that's the description I put on the package. Oh, when you're shipping it. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're talking. I see what you're doing there. Do you ever get a hard time doing that? No, no, I never have. Um, I don't think you, the people who are taking in the package really don't care. I've even received <laughs> leaky boxes, and that's been fine too. <laughs> Just don't care. Uh, who do you usually yeah. ship through? Uh, I uh, UPS is who I usually ship through. See, when I do it, I'll usually get the flat rate box and ship it through USPS because you know they're not. You're not supposed That's, to ship alcohol, but you know they're not paid enough to actually give a crap about what do. you're doing there. Yeah, I always get nervous on that one because that's the one where it's a federal crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I won't be doing that again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I am not a legal expert or anything like that. Don't take yeah, my oh, advice. The postal ex- inspector is <laughs> coming over to your house. Like, I didn't even know yeah, this was yeah. a thing. <laughs> that's right. I did actually meet the postmaster general once. <laughs> Did you? Way back, way back in the early 80s, yeah. Oh, boy. And was he talking to you about shipping beer? He was not talking to me about shipping beer. He was <laughs> just happy to uh, give... Uh, his daughter was working for my dad or something like that, and he was excited to be able to show us around You know, the bits of Washington, D.C. he could show us around. Like the post office? And he'd take you to like, the back <laughs> of the post office be like, check this out. <laughs> Well, he's got an office going. in one of the congressional buildings. I don't remember. Oh, it's again he? early '80s. So, but yes, we did get to tour the post office. 
<laughs> like, oh, wow, I never cared about this. It's still there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it was years later when Men in Black came out, and the post office seemed way more interesting after that. <laughs> oh, see, I can't remember the last time I saw that movie. Was there dumb stuff in the post office? All the aliens work in the post office. All the postal employees are aliens in that movie. Oh, nice. <laughs> But yeah, talk about DC. Wendy, have you been out to DC? I have. I actually did a beer trip to DC. Oh, how's the beer scene out there? I never thought about that. Um, there was some really good beer. That was the one of the places that they dropped us off in the um we had a lot of bad luck with our Ubers there because the one guy dropped us off and we found out that the brewery wasn't open yet. And luckily the brewer was there and was like, you can come in and wait until we open if you want. Cause there, it was not in a great neighborhood and it was in the middle of nowhere. So, but the, the Uber driver just left us there and was like, sorry, I got another pair to pick up. Oh, um, and then we went to another one that was closed for a special event that we didn't know about. Cause we didn't look at Facebook. We just looked at Google and then we went to a third one that we couldn't find. It we found it because we're we've gotten really good at looking for where the brewery might be. Um, it was a big white building with a bunch of different doors on it, and but the Uber driver didn't want to let us out because she's like, "I don't see a brewery. I don't think this is a good place for us to drop you off." And I'm like, "No, no, we'll find it." And I just happened to look over and there was a little tiny window like way at the top of the building. And it had a, a small sign that said beer. That was it. That was the <laughs> only thing that designated that this might be the brewery. Wow. And we went in and I will tell you what, it was some really good beer. I can't remember which brewery it was, but the beer was really good. We ended up staying there for a little extra time because of it. That's awesome. I didn't know DC had a good beer scene. Um, DC is the first place I was introduced to Dogfish Head back in 2000. Had no idea what it was back at the time, uh, but tried it. It was pretty good. Um, and obviously, you know, them being out there, I believe in Delaware, that totally makes sense of why it was out there. But, the brewery yeah. um, opened up, I can't remember what, what it's called, Side Project or something like that in DC. So there's a, a few good things. Um, I, I, I work and rest in every once in a while. I seem to get work out there. Um, and one of my favorite places that I've ever been to was this bike repair shop that had a brewery inside of it. What? They, only, they only had like three or four taps, but yeah, they, they were all good beers, all three or four of them. And people were biking in and getting their bikes fixed and stuff and biking out and maybe getting a beer along the way. Oh, I'm sure. You know, it's yeah. funny when you come across things like that. Um, if you ever visit Bottle Logic out in Anaheim, um, you have to walk across the street to the, um, uh, homebrew supply store because they also have like a 10 uh tap uh like craft beer uh tap room there um with all california beers it's actually pretty interesting you wouldn't know it if you didn't know about it so it's you it's a great way to just find random things like that i think it's the only time i've come across having you know a tap room in a homebrew store which is pretty cool yeah the, our our local homebrew store great fermentations um has a couple of taps that have the legalese on the that these taps are for sensory experiences only or something like what? that. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, have you ever like come that. across have you ever come across anything like that where you've got the like the bike shop with the brewery or the homebrew supply with the tap room? Any interesting yes. places? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a good example because I've run across a couple of things like that. I think I've had a few. Yeah, I, <laughs> there's always something fun like that going around. Jungle, I was Jungle Gems the, has a, a big homebrew supply section, and they also have taps, and you can get beer in your cup and do your grocery shopping and stuff. But that's a homebrew supply store of as one of its things. <laughs> See, that makes yeah. The there was a. Fun. A brewery that I went to in when I was staying in Golden, I was going from the airport towards Golden, and it was more of a homebrew store, supply store, than it was an actual 
tap room, but I mean, they did have a bar with like five or six different taps set up. So but they had a dog there too, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, there. <laughs> Perfect. Anytime there's a dog in the brewery, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah, so Quaff on be- down in, in uh, Nashville, Indiana. I talked about them on, on the beer trip that bus from hell that they were the, the ones who had just hell, moved, yes. <laughs> <laughs> who just moved to new digs. Yeah. <laughs> but when I first encountered them, they were a homebrew store is in, was in one building. Um, and then right across the street was them and their pizza place. And that's where most of their brewery was done at the time. Um, and they had another place right down the way that I think was just a tap room. So they had the homebrew, the pizza and the tap room all in, in the town of Nashville, Indiana. The one thing I think is cool when you mentioned having the dog at the homebrew place, um, the homebrew place I go to, especially if I have to refill my CO2 tank, um, they have an African gray parrot sitting around there and the thing never shuts up. Like, <laughs> does it swear? I have not heard it. I'm sure it does. They know everything. Like they can, they remember everything they ever hear, but oh man, it'll talk to you. You'll Second be like, what shift the hell? Has a bird. do they? There's yes. a uh, brewery out here called The Purge that has a lot of parrots. They're not just African greys, but they've got like the macaws and everything. Um, it's pretty cool. But man, those birds, when they talk, they don't stop. Like they never stop. That would annoy the crap out of me. And if you guys remember the old Next telephones, I used to know someone way back when those were a thing that had an African gray. It would make that damn chirp sound all the time that the Next Tell walkie talkie used to make. Like all the time. It's like, shut up. Like just stop it. I don't know how people live with those. They're just yeah, my endless. we had a just a small parrot. It was a budget guard that my mom taught how to talk, and she spent months locked in the bathroom with them for hours at a time just talking to him. And um they say that you should teach them how to talk before you teach them how to whistle because they won't talk if they whistle first. Oh wow! Something along those lines. I don't. It, it was a long time ago, so I don't know if I'm remembering that right. But those birds live a long time, so <laughs> they live a <laughs> long time. Uh, like, my bird if used any to. Of us gotta... Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. My bird used to oh, tease our say... dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Like, <laughs> you think that this bird was like just mimicking people, but that's what everybody always says about it. But he used to call the dog's name. And we, we let him fly around the house and he had perches all over the house that he could go to and from. And mm. the dog would go waltzing over to where his perch was and look around like, who just called me? And the, <laughs> the dog, it was a poodle. And he didn't like it when you did the, when he cut the hair in front of his eyes. Mm-hmm. So the bird would mimic the snip of the scissors <laughs> and the dog would panic and the bird would go ah ha, 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 oh, God. Oh, it, God. it was crazy when you'd see him happen when you'd see him do it oh no but he literally would do that on a regular occasion oh boy yeah they're smart and once they know how to talk it's like game over like they're gonna mess with you non-stop but it's funny when they learn bad words. I heard. I don't. I shouldn't even tell the story. I'm not going to say what the <laughs> birds learned. Um, there's an article out there. It happened in the UK. But there was a sanctuary uh, that had like 50 African greys or something. One of them most must have known a pretty offensive word and taught it. The others heard it, so they all learned it, and they would say it and then laugh. They had to like get them out of there and like have people adopt them because it was so bad. <laughs> There was one of the U.S. presidents back in like the early 1900s had a bird who swore so much that it was a problem. Oh, gee. <laughs> well, obviously they're picking it up from somewhere. So yeah. it's like they don't know those words unless you teach well, them. <laughs> according to the story, the president was very amused at the bird's foul language. Oh, I, I'd laugh. Like if I had a parrot, it wouldn't be allowed around other people. It couldn't because people be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Anyways, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, episode 344 of Better on Draft. Wendy, you're going to take us out with, because I suck at it. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what it is. Oh, it's what, whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, or whatever you no, think of your beer, we think it's that one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what you want. Whatever you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. There you go.
Cheers. How can we not get that right? 